Hoping everybody's feeling okay. Hope you guys are safe. That you're taking care of yourselves. Um, we're getting towards the end of the uh, end of the semester. This thing is finally going to end. I'm sure everybody here is pretty happy about that. Uh, just a, a couple of housekeeping items. You um, so for my 2530 classes, you guys, of course, we do have the the hands-on portfolio that's that's coming due. Some of you have already turned them in. The ones that have turned them in have been really good. Um, and then for those of you who, because of this um, unprecedented event that we're going through, weren't able to finish the project completely or even really get very much of it done, there is that alternate assignment. Um, if you go to your Canvas page, doesn't matter which section you're in, go to the assignments. And in the same area as the hands-on hands -on project, you'll find an alternate assignment. I have it set up so that um, you, you, you can do one or the other. And if you, you won't get penalized if you don't do both. So don't, don't worry about that. If you do, if, if you do the one, you don't, you don't have to do the other. So uh, you'll be good. Um, and then uh, your final exam. That's due on the 28th, and um, I'll show you what it is. Uh, I think you can already see it, but anyway, it's just a 500-word paper um, on what you're taking away from this class that you think will benefit you in the future as you uh, pursue your careers in IT, uh, whether they're network management or um, in security or what, whatever area you end up going into. So. Hopefully you guys will, will take uh, advantage of that and, um, you know, write up the 500 words on, on what you've learned from, from this class. Anyway, if you have questions about any of those types of assignments, then all you need to do is send me an email and I'll answer them the best that I can. So uh, today... It's gonna be it's gonna be kind of quick, but it's something that I promised that I would do with you guys. So um, I want to get to that real quick. And this is this is going to be um, this is going to be about uh, backup. And we've talked about the importance of backup and replication. And you'll really get uh, an in-depth dive of backup and replication in your server class, and then in 4600, and again in 4700. So, but for you guys, what I want you to do is establish a backup on your current machine that you have, just the one that you use at home or for school or whatever it is you're using. Um, and so we're going to use one that's free. And the one that we're using that's free is also the one that many, many, many companies use at the enterprise level. It's the one that I used at the enterprise level. Um, but the one for your individual machine is free. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to Google Veeam Agent for Windows and then put the free in there. If you're doing it on a Mac, you can do the same thing. Just replace Mac for Windows because they do offer a free version. All right, so we're going to search for this real quick. Okay. So let's see. Here we go. We've got free Windows backup solution for PCs and endpoints. Okay. Uh, backup Windows Server with Veeam Agent Windows. It's not what we want. So let's, let's grab this and see what we can get. So this is Veeam, and this is this is kind of what they look like. They, you know, they have the green logo. Um, you notice that it says free all over the place. So what you want to do is uh, free get you know get free edition download now. Click on the download. Going to make you sign in so that you can get you that they know who's getting their stuff. It's it's pretty basic. Um, Trying to see if I, I better create a Veeam account. I don't remember all my password stuff from last time.
trying to remember what my login is. Hang on. Okay, so once you get logged into your account, um, you'll have to create a little account. You can use Google or uh, Facebook, I think Instagram, and uh, no, not uh, Twitter and LinkedIn or something like that. So anyway, you're going to want to come in here and you'll see the download. It's just the Veeam agent for Win Microsoft Windows free. You're going to hit um, download. You're going to have to agree to their user license, as always. I wouldn't subscribe to any of this for right now. It drops a zip file down here. It doesn't take, it's not very big, so it doesn't take very long to get. And it's really simple to set up. So uh, as we set this up, I want you guys to, to really pay attention to... Um, what's what we're doing and how I'm doing this so that you can do it on your machine and get familiar with the backup process. So I'm going to pause this until it's finished and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, my zip's finished. I'm just going to go ahead and show it in the folder and I'll open it right here as well. Now I use 7-Zip. You guys can use anything you want. Um, I really like 7-Zip just because it's uh, it it does so many things that are cool. So, all right. Anyway, so now we have the Veeam agent for Windows. Gives you the version number. Um, no big deal. Double click it or right click and install as administrator. Accept the defaults. And one of the things that it does, it does create a little SQL database on your computer, um, but you'll you'll never, I mean, you won't notice it. Um, but that's where it's going to store stuff. So. It's not a big deal. Um, it's a small program, and the cool thing is that it runs in the background even when you're doing your first backup. And if you remember, when we talked about backups, we talked about the full backup versus an incremental backup. And a full backup is when it's taking, um, a, making a copy of everything on your machine, including your OS. So that takes, that takes longer. Depending on how much stuff you have, it, it takes quite a bit of time. But then all of your other backups, your incremental backups, those those will happen really quickly because it's only going to update what has changed between um, the day that it runs and the last time that it ran. All right, and that's the difference between incremental incremental and differential. Differential backs up all the changes since your last full backup incremental changes that um, updates and and uh, backs up only those changes made since your previous um, since your previous uh, backup okay so now I have I have a um, just a standard uh, um, one terabyte USB drive already plugged in. And so 
the software is going to look for some place to um, put your backups. You don't want to put them on your C drive. You don't want to put them on the internal drive of your computer. The whole point of having a backup is if you can't access data on your internal hard drive. And if you can't access data, you can't get it to boot, well, then you can't get your backup. So you always want to back it up to something different. Um, and what I encourage people to do is, you know, run your backup however often you need to. If you work on your, your computer every day and you're making changes to things every day, then I recommend you back up every day. If you don't use it that often, back it up as often as you use it. Now, um, if you travel, uh, if, you, you know, if you're on a business trip or uh, you're going on vacation, you're taking your computer with you, do not take your backup with you. Leave it at home. Leave it someplace safe. That way you don't lose it um, and kind of cause yourself headaches. You, you want to leave that in a safe place. All right. All right. So we're going to configure this right now. Um, Now it says, now this is important. Can we change your power plan settings to allow backup to wake up this computer from sleep? You want to say no. You do not want it to, to do this. There have been, there's a known issue with this. And um, I haven't read that, that Veeam has fixed it. So you want to answer no to this question, okay? All right. Now it's going to run the wizard for me, and it's just going to take me step by step in what we're doing. Okay, you see the first step here on my screen. We are making the recovery media, which is my D drive, and it's named my name. Now it could be named anything you wanted it to be. Okay, um, it also sees this ISO file because it's mounted on a virtual um, disk drive. So it, of course, it thinks that maybe there's something there, but we know there's not. So we'll select this um, and we'll leave the, def the defaults. Uh, we'll add this folder. We'll hit next. One second. Okay, that didn't take too long. Um, so now we've got uh, we've got my dad move my date over real fast so that because uh, there's stuff on there that I want to keep and I'm just using this as an example. So, um, like I said, we've we've picked the we've picked the drive we're going to use. Um, we have the stuff checked that we want. We hit next. Um, it's going to format the volume for us, uh, and that's fine. Um, it's going to format it and use NTFS uh, because NTFS is in inherently more secure and it's easier to back up. Um, you'll find that even the the Microsoft um, oh the uh, uh, even the Microsoft products that do some type of backup require that you have NTFS. So we'll hit yes, let it do its thing. And then create. Now, as far as this recovery media, um, you're going to want to make a separate one of those. And the reason is, is that uh, that's the way that you're going to access your backup. In other words, it's so it's a bootable media. 
you'll you'll put it in it plugs in you put it plug it into your machine you'll turn your machine on you'll hit f12 or f2 or f11 depending on what what your machine likes or requires for you to get into the boot menu and then you'll pick the uh, USB that you've plugged in. Once you pick that, it'll give you all kinds of options that you can do. You can restore files, folders, um, and you can restore it using uh, a screen that looks exactly like Windows Explorer. So, you, you know, you guys all know how to use that. Um, if you're doing a bare metal restoration, there's the bare metal restoration. Um, and bare metal meaning uh, you lost everything on your machine, your hard drive went bad, or well, you got a new computer, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, it will uh, it will create the an exact copy of the machine that you had working before whatever disaster happened and. Uh, you'll be ready to go. You won't have to. You won't have to reinstall anything. You won't have to change any settings. They'll all just be right there. Now, one of the other things that it does inside this recovery is it also takes the really important drivers that you need when you're first getting your your machine booted up, and it adds those to the um, recovery device so it's kind of cool because it has your your system drivers already in there so that you can get so that you can you know be up and running uh quickly now the again the the first time you do this um when the first time you you run a backup it's going to take a while um depending on how much data you have and depending on what kind of a connection you've got, you know, is it USB 1, is it USB 2, 3.0, um, that will that will make a big difference on your transfer speeds. Uh, so, but just expect it to take a few hours, and I'll show you what you're going to look for, um, and I will show you what you need to do as far as. Um, uh, making sure that your backups are happening the way they should. So this is almost done. This is just the recovery media that it's creating. And like I said, um, you can bypass this step when you first do this. Uh, in fact, that's it's usually what I recommend doing, but I wanted you to see it. Um, you'll bypass this step, and then you'll come back and do it later. Because you're going to want to have a, you know, just a USB stick that's dedicated to nothing but this bootable recovery media. And then you're going to want to put it someplace safe. You don't want to keep it with your computer. You want to keep it someplace safe so that you know where it is, label it, make sure you know you, that you have it. And that's, uh, that's a vital part of what you're going to be doing. Okay, so that's finished. Um, hit the finish button on it. Now the the Veeam icon itself is going to be down here in your tray, and this is it right here. Okay, and this your full backup. So. We're going to right click. We're going to go up to control panel. 
Um, it operates in free mode. Would you like to install a license? No, because you want it to be free. All right, so now what it's going to ask is, um, do you want to back, are you ready to back up? Now, over here, there's other things that you can do. Um, as far as uh, options and settings and stuff, you can play around with that. Here, that's the name of my computer, L5071. Um, and if you look, you can see that you have all sorts of different options that you can go through. Um, you can do, you know, the backup now, active full backup, standalone full backup, backup to another location. Okay. So in a, um, in a business setting, you would probably back this up to a what they call a um, a Veeam repository. So that's going to be some type of a of a file system on a server or on a NAS someplace uh, that you would that you would use. Okay. I'm going to click back up now, and I won't keep you on here for the entire time because it ta it'll take too long. But it'll show you um, second here. Go in here, let's configure my backup real fast. Because it may not have configured it while we were doing our thing. So in configuring your backup, you're gonna there's gonna be a whole bunch of options that you're gonna pick or not pick. Um, let's see if we can pull this up and can and configure my backup file. It says the Veeam icon as far as when it's getting ready to do stuff. All right, job name. You can make it whatever you want. You can say Troy uh, Work Computer. If you want to make that its name, click Next. This is where you decide what you want to back up. Your entire computer, just the volume level or file level. Um, I recommend you do the entire computer. Um, I wouldn't include external drives. Okay, uh, I probably throw errors at you if the drive isn't plugged in when it goes to goes to back it up. So don't worry about backing up your drives. Just pick it entire computer. Then go next. So here's where I'm talking. What I was talking about earlier. You're doing. We're, I'm doing local storage right now because I have a local storage device attached. You could do a shared folder. This is if you guys are doing uh, like a, a Windows Server file share, which you'll learn about in your server class. And um, it's a it's a just a common place to put them. Or you could be going to a Veeam backup repository. That's the most common um, when it comes to the enterprise type stuff. Uh, and then there's the Microsoft OneDrive. Um, so we'll just pick local storage for now. And go back then went fast. All right, so um, the local storage, we're using storage E. That's the one that has 930 gigabytes on it. The folder is going to be E, Veeam Backup. So when you open it, if you want to see where your backups are, um, then you're going to want to go to the Veeam backup folder. It'll be inside there. How many days do you want to keep these for this? The uh, uh, the default seven. 
I like to keep them for 14 days. Um, sometimes something will go bad on your computer, and sadly, it you may not know exactly when it happened. So you want as many restore points as you can get, and you're going to have more restore points or backups with 14 days than you will with 7. Okay, now I can pick when I want this to back up. I can do it every day at 12.30 a.m. in the morning. All right. Um, now, if, the, my, if my computer shut down at the time, that's okay. It will back up when I open it up and power it up. Okay. And then here you show that it's it keeps... Um, it keeps working no matter what. Uh, it keeps your computer running even after the backup. All right. So you want it daily at whatever time you decide you want to do it. You can also choose, you know, on weekdays, on uh, customize these days. It, you you pick whatever you want. All right. Now the other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you check this one. If you're doing it on your personal computer like this, when backup target is connected. So I want it so that if for some reason I've I'm on vacation or whatever and it's not backing up, when I get home and I'm gonna plug my backup in, when my backup is connected and my machine's on, it's going to immediately kick up and do um, a new backup, all right? So you want to make sure you check that. And then here, you don't want it to be every two hours. You probably want it to be every 12. Don't back it up more than every 12 hours just because you, you know, you, you want, you, you don't want it backing up all the time. Uh, then it gives you this message again. You want us to change your power plan, and the answer is no, we don't. All right, and then it's going to tell me what all of the sum the summary. Here's what you pick to do, right? And so you're going to check this. Click the job to run when I when I hit finish. Hit finish, and now the job is running. See this green bar processing, and it says. So it's gonna it's gonna back up 9.53 gigs. It's tells me what time it's doing it, when it's doing it, and when it finishes, then I'll be able to go down into this little icon tray again, and right here, it will show me this this icon, and if it if it passed, it will be green. If it passed but it had warnings, it will there there'll be a yellow mark. And if it failed, there will be red. And if it failed, then there's red, there will also be messages. So you want to kind of keep an eye on this and every couple days check to make sure your backups are working. Okay. Um your backup may have stopped because you ran out of space on your disk. Or um, so maybe you need to uh, pull back on how many days you do it. So just make sure you look at the, the, the messages and make sure you're monitoring this so that you can uh, keep up with what's going on and with um, making sure that your backups are actually happening. So here's the, here's the deal. For listening to this uh, recording and, and uh, having to you know go through and do this if you if you'll take a screenshot of the screen that you're looking at right now on your computer not my computer your computer and it'll have it'll have the name of your whatever you named it right up here and that it's backing up and that there's some progress you take that screenshot and then if you submit it in the area where it says um, veeam extra credit you'll get extra credit for doing this. So those of you that maybe need a little bit of help with your grade, that's a good way to do it. Um, just go ahead and, and take care of this. It's no big deal. Uh, 
and then you'll you'll have a little bit of um, you know give you a little boost to your grade. So I know we're coming to the end, um, and you know you have your final coming up. You also have to decide. Uh, I know that you've gotten an email from the administration about whether you want a letter grade or you want to go the credit, no credit route. Uh, that's entirely up to you guys. This is new. Uh, I've, I've never, I've never seen this even as a student. I never saw uh, credit, no credit offerings. So if you have questions about how that might affect your GPA or uh, things in the future, I would strongly advise you to speak with your academic counselor about this. They're going to be in the know much more so than I am. Um, those of you who are doing really well in the class, take the grade. You know, an A is always better than taking credit and having to try to explain why you have a credit on your on your transcript. Um, so, but other than that, you're free to make the decision, um, but make sure you just make an informed decision. If you have questions, send me an email, send me a text. If you need to speak with me, we can set up a little meeting uh, in Canvas in the live room, and we can talk uh, live and work out whatever we need to for you. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Um, follow what what the university and the state and the CDC is asking of you. Uh, you know, I don't want any of you guys getting sick. I don't want you guys getting anybody sick. Um, I, I look forward to having you all in my classes in the future. So thanks again. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. Talk to you soon. Bye.